Okay, so we're gonna do one more example here. This is one with, you can use um, footage, right? And so this one's inspired by um, an ESPN Monday Night Football package I referenced um, in a previous set of lessons uh, for dis distressed texture. This is um, something I saw them do on the Monday Night Football package, and I thought it was really cool. So I'm gonna do something somewhat similar. We'll call this basketball. We're going to go into our raster here, and we're gonna find uh, the basketball player. So this right here is a layer that I went into Photoshop and I cut this guy out, okay? And his name's Alec Burks, I believe. He's a NBA player. And all I did was, this was the original image, and I just went in and cut him out with the quick selection tool and ended up with this cutout just like this. So here we are back in After Effects. And I'm just gonna start by making this th layer 3D. And I am gonna make sure we've got their alpha channel. There we go. It's turned on. Gonna go up to layer, new camera. And we're gonna stick with 35 millimeter again, just to make it very easy. Zoom out so we can get the right framing for how we want it to kind of look. So something like that. Um, and we're also going to bring in this image I found on Unsplash. And this is just gonna be our background layer. So we'll do a 3D on this layer as well. And we're just gonna push this layer way back in Z space. Maybe something like, oh, 1800, something like that. And with that layer pushed way back in Z space, we can scale now at this point larger than 100% and keep you know an okay resolution. So we're gonna do something like somewhere in here, around 245 or so. I'm going to drag up this. So it kind of looks like maybe he's standing on this uh, court. I know it's not, you know, totally believable, but just something I want just like a, a background image that's gonna be out of focus. Uh, so it's not super important that we see it uh, in full detail here. Uh, next I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm gonna start positioning these back in space. And I found that around negative 900 works. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to two views so you can see what's going on here. And this view will switch to custom. And I'm just gonna duplicate these guys going back and we'll go now negative 1800, because we're at 900 plus another 900. Duplicate again, negative 2700. And we'll duplicate one more time and we'll do negative 3600, something like that. And our camera, let's make sure our camera is set to, so it's set to two node. I'm gonna use one node for this. So it's one node and Let's set a keyframe for that. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's just reset this to 960, 540. And we'll do maybe third, negative 3100 or so. Um, we're going to two seconds forward because this is where we want everything to, uh, we want the basketball players to be in position at this point. So this is where their keyframes are set. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And we'll go back to the beginning and we're going to make them all the same positions, zero, uh, zero, zero pixels and Z space. So you'll see they're all going to go up right up here. When I hit zero, boom. So they're all lined up right here. So it looks like there's just one layer here, but uh, actually... They're all right there, lined up one on top of the other. So the next thing we're gonna do is, now we need to reposition our camera so that we can see the top of his head. So something like, maybe like this. I'm also gonna take the background transparency down, maybe like 28. I just want it to be kind of dark back there. It doesn't, it's not the focus of the piece. So it just needs to kind of just be back there 
uh, give us some uh, reference to where we're at. So as these guys kind of push back, our camera needs to push back as well. So we're gonna hit C to zoom out and we're just kind of moving this guy back. And moving them over to the side like this. I'll do a little bit of rotation as well. So I'm gonna hit R for rotation. I'm gonna set a keyframe, right click, easy ease, and move all these to the front. The reason I set keyframes for all of these is because I don't know exactly uh, what rotation property I'm gonna work with. So I like to just set keyframes so I, if I do move a rotation property, it sets a new keyframe and I don't have to worry about losing my original position. I'm gonna right click again, easy ease on the position keyframes. So let's see here. Now, if you hold down shift when you rotate as well, it's only going to rotate on whatever axis. So I'm rotating, I'm dragging left to right. So it's just gonna keep it on that X axis. I'm going to turn off two views here. Maybe zoom out a little bit more. And at this point, it's just about getting my composition exactly how I want it to be. Something like that. And then it'd be kind of cool to see like, um, if this was like a piece for like an opening um, about him that maybe it says his name. So I'll type in Alec Burks. Not a huge basketball fan. I love the NFL. And I'm using a font here called, typeface called Agency FB. And I'm just gonna make this 3D. So when I made it three, you can see all the, when I made it 3D, you can see that it kind of disappeared back in here. It's still there, it's just behind this layer right here. I'm just gonna drag it on the X. Something like that. I'm also gonna turn on depth of field. And I'm gonna go back to my two views. And I'm just gonna crank up my aperture here. And it'd be kind of cool to focus in on maybe like this third guy right here, which is right, eh, maybe one more actually, this guy right here. So let's set, set our focus distance there. And we're actually gonna go to top view here. So let's go back to that guy. It was this guy right here. So I want my focus distance to cross the boundary here of the, the bounding box of this layer. So I'm gonna increase the focus distance here. So we're focused right there. And there he is, he's in focus. I'm gonna crank up the aperture so that the foreground and the background are both blurred. And then I wanna make sure that my type, since I'm focused here, my type needs to be lined up there. And you can see the types way back there. So we'll bring the type that's crossing the focal plane right there. Hit S for scale. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit there. Maybe bring it up. Something like so. Go back to one view and see what it looks like. Let's render this out. It looks pretty dope. I'm just going to change the position on this background just a little bit.
And you can see a weird artifact happening here where this layer is crossing with, with this first player layer. There's like some transparency going on there. And it shouldn't be because there's the player is 100% transparency. Um, and this background is pushed back. Uh, so sometimes when you work with 3D layers, there can be some really weird things that happen where the layers cross each other and do some weird things. So a really quick fix to do this is just to create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. And just by adding that adjustment layer between the two 3D layers, it solves the problem. So you can see there, now there's no longer any transparency issues. Um, I call these a cutter. And you just need to lock that layer. So it's just there to create, uh, to get rid of any weird things that happen. Um, so you can see here how it looks. Uh, it looks really cool uh, with a very simple effect of just separating elements into 3D space, uh, flat artwork in a 3D space. You could use this for photos, for graphics, for footage uh, that's rotoscoped. Um, and then just really quickly, I just wanna show you if we were to duplicate the camera, turn off our bottom camera, and just to close all these up, so there's no confusion here. If I was to make this camera a two node camera, you can see there immediately that the position changed. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just reset this camera, turn off all of our keyframes and reset and I'm gonna go ahead and just move the camera into place. So with moving with this camera tool here, uh, with the pan or the zoom, it's gonna move the, the track X and Y is gonna go ahead and move the entire camera. Um, you can see down at point of interest and position moves. Uh, so it's going to move both of those where the zoom out, the track Z, is only gonna move the position of the camera. It doesn't move the anchor point, the point of interest but here we are, we're set up. I'm gonna set a position only keyframe, set it to keyframe easy ease, go two seconds in, and I'm gonna pull the camera back in Z so we can see what's going on here. And I'm gonna move it on the X. Because remember that point of interest is sitting right here the entire time. It's right there. Sorry, I had the wrong point. So this might be an animation where point of interest, the two node camera actually helps make, maybe make a little bit smoother motion. Cause I, I noticed on the one node camera, there's a little bit of a, of a kind of a, a rock to the motion. Um, so I want to get this solved here. So maybe something like that. Um, I could just cheat this over just a hair, just like that. Make sure, okay, we're seeing it there. And maybe see a little bit more of the players here, maybe so I can see the back, the name on the backs, so maybe something like this. Well, I can't see the back, but if we can just see part of the back right there. And then again, taking the background. So now let's check out what this looks like. And there we go. So that's a much smoother motion uh, with this effect. And uh, I actually like this one a little bit better. I would probably come in and fine tune placement of the text, things like that. Um, it's a little bit out of the focus plane now. Um, if I go back to two views horizontal and I turn on so there's our focal plane, there's our text. Bring it forward, something like so. And there you go. So hopefully uh, you get the idea here of what you can do with uh, 3D layers, 2D layers in 3D space inside of After Effects. I call it 2.5D, a very powerful technique um, and can really open up possibilities when it comes to motion graphics. 
uh, with After Effects.